Lisa, may I invite you to come over to give us the last vision of this after the, uh, afternoon, the last vision of the day, actually. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a, been a lot of talk today about the way photographs circulate on the on a kind of meta scale, and I just want to maybe focus in a little bit and talk about um, the way in which certain images circulate in my own practice and world. So I'm actually just talking about the work of three artist friends of mine. Um, just uh, people whose work I find incredibly inspiring and interesting. Um, and I wrote a text, so I'm just going to read it. I'm sorry, I'm not very good at being uh, spontaneous. Um, I'm talking about uh, a photography of stillness, of process, of working with an image rather than posting it. A kind of interrogation that looks at the way images are made rather than taking for granted their om omnipresence. There's this assumption that photographs carry meaning by the very nature of having a kind of indexical relationship to things in the world. But there's so much else that goes into making a photograph that also produces its meaning. The technologies employed in its production, the chemicals used in its processes, the situation of the viewer physically and within a larger institutional framework. I want to focus on the work of three artist friends working in photography, Josh Brand, Carter Mull, and Liz Deschens. I do this, of course, as an artist, in part to situate my own work within a discussion of relevant concerns of artists who seem relevant to what I do. So the first artist I'm talking about is Josh, Josh Brand. When I first came across Josh's work, I thought immediately of its relationship to abstract painting. But on second look, although this relationship to painting seems obvious, there's much more that connects it to photography. The work is certainly evocative of photograms of Man Ray, Maholi Naj, Christian Shad, and others. But I would argue that the concerns evident in Josh's photographs are, are very much of this historical moment. It's not nostalgia for increasingly outmoded analog technologies, but it's what happens when technologies and things in the world stop serving a commercial function. Walter Benjamin discusses this in his essay on surrealism. Benjamin, Benjamin writes that it is possible to, quote, perceive the revolutionary energies that appear in the outmoded, in the first iron constructions, the first factory buildings, the earliest photos, the objects that have become to be extinct. No one before these visionaries and augurs perceived how destitution, not only social but archi architectonic, the poverty of interiors slash enslaved and enslaving objects can suddenly be transformed into revolutionary nihilism. Josh's work, although not exactly possessing a revolu revolutionary nihilism, if that can even exist, simil similarly frees everyday objects and images from their use value. Kitchen windows, portraits of friends, become part of compositions. Images produced out of the stuff he has lying around, pieces of cardboard, glass cups. Like the analog photographic tools he employs, his subjects don't seem to have a place in the larger world. It's a small personal cosmology. The photographs themselves are small, often the size of an A4 sheet of paper, scaled to New York City apartment living. Increasingly, his photographs um, Increasingly in his photographs, object and subject collapse or meld. Dark room tests and materials are explicitly becoming the material of composition. I find this to be an exciting move and development in his work. While looking at these images, it's interesting to think about Josh's work as a kind of oblique documentary practice. One that documents, absorbs, and in a way liberates the things of everyday life. Each photograph, each photograph a document of its own making. So that's Josh's work. This is Carter Mull. Uh, Josh is an uh, artist based in New York. This is the work of Carter Mull, a Los Angeles-based artist. Carter's art is often made up of extremely processed images that denaturalize what it means to look at a picture. Both uh, by using both traditional darkroom and digital technologies, he pushes familiar kinds of images out of the register of familiarity. The images he uses are mostly from the commercial realm, images from magazines and from TV commercials. 
Oftentimes, the source material consists of newspapers, newspaper images, and the papers themselves. Yesterday's news. Carter pushes and reframes these most everyday of images, and like Josh, does not allow objects and images to act as they're supposed to. Carter's newspapers do not give you insight into the news or reveal a photograph used to illustrate a story about Egyptian protesters. They, also like Josh's images, become documents of their own making. A floor installation from a recent show he had at Mark Fox Gallery in LA is made up of 1,800 film stills that each represent 1 30th of a second of a one minute television commercial. The piece titled Diamond Caviar does something interesting by creating a spatial component to time. Fractions of seconds are scattered throughout the gallery. 60 seconds become a physical expanse, not enough time to go through a space, to look about or think about a show. The very presence of this minute of time scattered through the space of the gallery enables a viewer to contemplate the nature of the temporality of images, of what we look at and for how long. In this way, Carter's work very much deals with an idea of slowness of taking images that would otherwise be imperceptible, like 1 30th of a second, or undesired, yesterday's news, and through a labor-intensive processing, and through labor-intensive processing and manipulations, allowing them another existence in another future space and time, that of their viewing. So that's the installation shot of the show. And it's just a close-up of the floor. The last uh, artist I wanted to talk about was is Liz Deschens. Well, I mean, actually, it's good because I have like a little description of her work written by Roberta Smith, who's the chief art editor of the New York Times. Um, in describing Liz Deschens' work, she writes that uh, her latest images start with there are these like giant pictures of moray patterns, and they're really like. They're just, they're just, it looks like, you know, two screens when they cross each other and you kind of look at it from different ways. It, they, they're, they're, it's just the mores that are created. And how she makes these images is um, she starts with eight by 10 inch black and, a black and white negative sheet of perforated paper photographed against a well-lighted window. The negative is duplicated and superimposed using an enlarger without being strictly aligned. Each of the seven, even the, by the, each of the seven 54 by 40 inch color prints made by this method has a unique moire pattern. So basically, they're just these incredibly trippy big photographs. And it's sort of like op art, but made in this incredibly um, uh, personal and non-aggressive way. Um, and what really interests me in, the, in Liz's work that you can't see, um, is how the misalignment of these of the things that creates the mores the 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 misalignment makes for a kind of motion um, a simple ge gesture based on a cognitive defect that causes all of us to see multi-dimensional more patterns and misaligned print ads and screen doors liz's process is built almost entirely on these imperfections and mis misalignments and process and vision the two red dye transfer prints in the show on close inspection were not the same shade of red. This approach to photography and vision through defects and failures seemed like a very useful, stra stra very useful and elegant strategy for opening up and questioning the way photographs produce meaning. I mean, if a shade of red can't be read as stable and a sure image, then what can? So this is from a different body of work. Her mirror photographs, which all seem to be titled some variation of tilt swing, also provide a very elegant critique of the way we look at photographs and how they function in the world. Through a kind of toning process, the surface of the photograph becomes like an old mirror, reflecting back at the viewer, reflecting at the other artwork and architecture of the space, reflecting the other mirror photographs. It becomes impossible to project onto these images, question what's going on, what it all means, because despite any kind of concentrated looking, all that is visible is what surrounds you, the viewer, and the photograph. The photographs project back onto you, emptying out onto their surroundings the images they collect. Um, so I can't really sum up the work of these three artists in any tidy way. Good art can and should keep that from happening, but since I'm in no 
and no place to suggest what's next in photography, I thought the least I could do was talk about what I find interesting in my world now. That's it. <laughs> mm -hmm.